Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Quranic Contemplations where we're going to be reflecting and contemplating on selected verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is part nine uh, corresponding to the ninth juz of the Quran. The first verse we're going to be looking at from this, the, the ninth juz is verse number 150 of Surah Al-A'raf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks about Musa alayhi salam returning back to his people after he had had a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he comes back and finds them worshipping a calf, worshipping a cow, a cow that they made from uh, they made from gold and from other material and they started to worship this cow. He comes back and he's furious, he's angry. And so this is part of the ayah where Allah Azza wa Jalla, he tells us that Musa threw down the tablets and he seized his brother. He seized his brother by the head. And then he pulls him towards him because he's angry. He left Harun in charge of the people while he was gone. And now they're worshipping an idol. They're worshipping a calf, a cow. They're committing shirk. And so Harun responds and he or he answers because he's seen how angry Musa is. And he says, so he says to Musa salam, O son of my mother, indeed the people oppressed me and they were about to kill me, meaning I tried my best, but they were going to kill me. I had no control over them. I was powerless. Now what's beautiful about this ayah is why does Harun salam, respond to Musa and call him, O son of my mother? Because if you have brothers <clears throat> uh, and you're calling your, your brother, you wouldn't call your brother, O son of my mother. That's just, you wouldn't do that. It's just not normal. You would call him by his name or a nickname. You wouldn't call him, uh, oh, son of my mother, come over here. You wouldn't do that. So why does Harun, alayhi salam here, say, oh, son of my mother? Why didn't he say, oh, Musa? Or, you know, oh, my brother. Or even, oh, son of my father. Why mother? Uh, it said one of the reasons is because of Musa السلام, being so angry that Harun السلام, wanted to appeal to his merciful side. And so he reminded him of the mercy that their mother had over them and the mercy of the mother generally. And so in order to do this, he says, Yabna um, or Qal abna um. He says, O oh, son of my mother, meaning just as our mother was merciful to us, please be merciful with me at this moment in time. So subhanAllah, you know, you see the beautiful eloquence of the Qur'an and the beautiful speech of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they were so careful and precise with their speech. It really shows us and makes us appreciate the, the Qur'an and the speech of Allah azza wa jal. And number two from Surah Araf is verse number one, is verse number 204, where Allah azza wa jal tells us, وَإِذَا قُرْعَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَمْسِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ That when you hear the Qur'an being recited or when the Qur'an is recited, Listen to it and pay attention that you may receive mercy. And one of the things we can learn from this verse is that in fact, when a person hears Quran being recited, when he's listening to Quran, he shouldn't speak. And he should pay, listen attentively and pay attention to whatever is being recited. Now, what's the benefit of a person doing this? If a person does this and he pays attention to the Qur'an when it's being recited, he doesn't talk over the Qur'an, this is one of the ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give an individual from his mercy. Because Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So how can Allah azza wa jal give you mercy? How can Allah send down his mercy upon you? Allah sends down his mercy upon you when you listen to the Qur'an when it's being recited. That's one of the ways in which a person can earn the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, verse number, the third verse we're going to look at is verse number 205 from Surah Al-A'raf, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in fact, it's the next verse uh, uh, that we just uh, talked about. Allah azza wa says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَدَرُّعَ وَخِيفَةً Remember your Lord within yourself in humility and in fear without being apparent in speech in the mornings and the evenings and do not be among the heedless. Here Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, He's telling us, remember your Lord. 
is encouraging us and telling us and commanding us to remember him, to perform dhikr, to do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like the previous ayah tells us about the benefits of uh, listening to the Quran, here Allah tells us the benefits of remembering Allah and doing dhikr. Allah tells us that from those people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the mornings, in the mornings and in the evenings, is that this individual won't be among the heedless. Because Allah says at the end, don't be among the heedless. Meaning those who don't remember Allah regularly in the mornings and evenings, they'll be among the heedless. The heedless are those who are careless. They're neglectful. They don't care. They don't pay attention. They lack attention to, they lack, you know, attention and, you know, they lack a certain element of care and they're careless. So here Allah is telling us when a person is constantly remembering Allah in the mornings and in the evenings, that's actually one of the ways that we cannot be heedless. That's one of the ways where we're constantly, continuously attentive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is always in our hearts because we're remembering him on a regular basis. And when a person does this, then he's more aware of his, of his actions. And he's more attentive and more careful about not committing sins. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us remember uh, him uh, in the mornings and in the evenings and that he doesn't make us from those who are heedless. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.